cur genuinely curious right. if you've ever apologized for a joke. I was legitimately nervous to ask that question. Um, genuinely scared. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I do it to an, the individual that I hurt. If I was, if, listen, if I'm in a bad mood, okay, now some asshole's going to cut that right there. See, comedian should apologize because that's everybody's like Fox <laughs> yeah. News and CNN now, like uh, <laughs> staring at <laughs> they, They'll cut out all this part. No, if I'm in like a bad mood and like, or if I did, if I told a joke about something that somebody had a personal effect to and I, and I made him sad or made him cry, you know, yeah. there's that comic thing. Well, fuck you, lady. You shouldn't have come out. Like, I don't take it to that level. It's just like, yeah, you're right. You know, I didn't, I didn't think of that. I didn't know you were gonna be here tonight. What are the fucking odds you were at that thing that I was making fun of? You know what I mean? But that can happen. But what I think is, I, I, I refuse to apologize to anybody that is upset that they that they heard a joke at a show they weren't at. You know, when, especially if somebody yeah. film. Okay, if it's in my special, that's different. I decided to like put it out or whatever. Um, but like, you know, if it's one of those things where someone in the crowd films you and then they put it up, it's like get mad at them and you, because you you saw the subject and you clicked on it. So I mean, that's that's <laughs> yeah, you had all of these other fucking things. They have like, they they have videos of just dogs snoring that you could watch <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and feel good about your day. But yeah. you went out of your way. <laughs> to fucking watch this thing, it's on you. Well, the fact that it's shown up in their algorithm means that they're fucking already in the, the energy field of all those videos. Yeah. And that's something I love to do, blaming the victim. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what were you watching if you saw it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. How did it pop yeah. up on your no, feed? I, I, I am, uh, I'm a big believer in if you are wrong and you feel you're wrong, you apologize. But I'm not a believer in the mob mentality and I'm now going to apologize just because it's not worth it. Because then all I do is give that strength that that's okay to do that. And then some other comic's going to have to deal with it. So, I'm, mm. uh, yeah. So, like, yeah. If you come up to me after a fucking show, I mean, I, I'll listen to you and I'll be like, and if I agree with what you're saying, I'll be, yeah, all right, okay. I fucked up. I'm sorry. I, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> it wasn't a personal thing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you went through that or whatever. And I found you can like actually they'll be cool with you in the you know people like anybody like us we want to be heard so but as far as that that you know that professional being offended so you can move whatever cause because mm -hmm. you feel like you can fix society you know with your <laughs> ideas i mean I, I i don't i don't get into that yeah okay what do you enjoy doing better tv <laughs> shows or movies or stand up. Uh, I will tell you this: it was a long time ago. It used to be movies, but now TV shows are is are so badass. Speaking of which, we're in a credit here. Reservation Dogs. Yeah. I I had a blast doing that. Um, uh, Breaking Bad, Chappelle Show. I've done. I've, Breaking I've somehow, Bad made it that way. I feel like. Yeah, uh, I would say The Wire before that. Uh huh. Um, Sopranos. Just, yeah, HBO and, yeah. And, and and Dexter. Basic Cable was the thing that showed like all of a sudden like you know you can go to this level and i'm still waiting for the sitcom to uh to get to that level and i feel like there's always been like a glass ceiling on how funny you can be in front of a live audience like at a, at a sitcom because the the suits get all nervous with any sort of thing that isn't like you know just a fastball mm -hmm. you know good american values right over the plate mm -hmm. and um that's why i was really rooting for when norton and um Louis did uh, Louis sitcom. Like I thought, what Louis was doing was gonna like hopefully break. Jay Moore a long time ago did a great one. Um, that Peter he played Peter Dragon. What the hell was that? Um, he played this producer, and then that was on Fox. And that was another one that I, I thought sort of. Exp but that was more of a one camera. But that sort of expanded to like, you know, okay, people are adults. They know what's phony now. So they want to see something that's real or absolutely absurd, I feel. And um, especially because now the average person on YouTube is making a video and then they read comments. So even they, in a way, are like in an editing bay and they learn yeah. what plays and what <clears throat> doesn't. And they actually know what it, in, a, in a small way what it's like to make something creatively and bomb and have it, <laughs> have it get yeah. zero stars <laughs> and, uh, you know, and have all of those awful feelings um how, how was it to make like f is for family you're able to like 
let a joke breathe a lot more than like a, a sitcom, right, or a TV show. Yeah, and uh, and Netflix was awesome because their thing was when we did it. The, I remember when we when they read the pilot episode, they were going like, "Yeah, push it further," and that was like the dream note that you were <laughs> waiting for. But like that was and that was one of those things. Like Mike Price uh, from The Simpsons, he, he's the co-creator and the and the, and the showrunner. He was. He was the captain of that ship, so I can only take so much credit. He like if you like F is for Family, Mike Price is the reason why you like it because all of that stuff that I had to do on this movie now, I already respected <clears throat> Mike, but now having done this, I'm like, oh my god! Like the amount of questions that this guy has to answer um, that I didn't, and, and the amount of decisions that he had to make. So, um, and then also, you know, Vince Vaughn, when you know when I pitched doing an animated show, it'd been a while since like uh comedians had done like an animated show like Howie Mandel and Louis and uh, Louis Anderson rest his soul had, had had done those and they you know this industry is really like what's happening now so someone hadn't done one in a minute so I think me pitching a cartoon was weird but uh Vince Vaughn got behind it and was sitting there in the pitch meeting so when they were looking at me he's like <laughs> why does this idiot want to do uh, a cartoon they'd be like oh my god that's an a-list movie star <laughs> it's yeah. vince vaughn he believes in it so i i always felt like peter billingsley and vince vaughn i gotta make sure i say everybody's name that got that thing going um they were the reason why that that thing got on the air and then i just you know i mean i literally learned how to write a script on that thing i learned how to do three different takes of a line all of that shit that i didn't know because i came up as a comedian, I'm like, I tell the joke. This is how I tell it. If it bombs, I <laughs> yeah. move on to next thing. Mm -hmm. um, was that the idea with comedy? Like you got into comedy to do acting or did you just only want to be a comedian and it kind of just happened? I always want to be a comedi comedian. I, I, all the comedians that I love became great comics, obviously. I, you know, those ones that I watched. And then they, they... They got picked up on stuff. Yeah, like... You know, Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, uh, Cheech and Chong, all of them. And then they would go into movies and I was really watching. Um, and then you'd see other people that they get a shot. And because they were in comedy clubs and didn't take enough acting classes, when they got that shot, you know, you'd get your shot. And if you didn't, it's not like today, man. Back then, when you got your shot, that was your shot. And if you didn't get it, dude, like you got put all the way to the back of the line, dude. And I'm telling you, you had to wait like seven, eight years you had to wait for studio execs to die or get fired <laughs> to, to be forget. like, is it okay yeah. to go back in that building Fuck. again? Because they're going to be like, oh, yeah, we tried something with you and it didn't work. You're the it doesn't work guy. Um, so you just stayed in comedy for a while? No, I started taking acting classes early on. Oh. Um, yeah, it was always acting in comedy. Yeah. I well, I remember I ran into a comedian and he was one of these guys that, that uh, he was a young comic and a redhead, I think. Well, I think that was him. Yeah, a long time ago. And he told me a story like, you know, I went down to New York and he had this look on his face and he goes, dude, I went up and I killed and there was some head of NBC was there and they were like, dude, you're so castable. And they brought me in. They gave me a script and I didn't know what to do with it. And the way he told the story, I, I just never forgot. And he's like, dude, my biggest advice to you, forget all this, you, this comedy stuff, just keep doing it. But like take acting classes along the way. So when you get your shot, um, you know, you, you don't blow it. Yeah, you don't blow it. So, wow. thank you to him. <laughs> That's good. Um, I saw something where uh, you said that you learned how to fly a helicopter because you looked into the banking system. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? 